all of this before we get into it on Friday's Togutonic Shift. But outside of that, what did you also think about the mini crossover in general, as well as the pacing of it all? Anyway, that's it for me. Until next time, bye. regarding this episode. I saw some people's first impressions when they watched the Raw the previous night. I even watched Ash, the Yahtzee360's review, just to gauge his thoughts. Though, on his side of things, he believes that this entire Doug Dead plot point seems to be the genuine article. But I still hope that it's a complete fabrication. Though, if this is indeed all an act, then it also points more and more to Raculous just playing 4D chess with everyone. And we start debating on the whole Raculous redemption potential of it all. Which look, I, I've seen the Luke pictures for next week's episode. And... So seriously, what do you want? That was the only funny part about the entire show. Outside of that, everything else just was either lackluster or just very hard to swallow in terms of what they're feeding you. Really, this episode can get bumped up to a C or drop down to an F, all depending on how they handle this whole Doug Dead clone plot point. Now, for those of you that watched my Dama Rider Beast review, I'm having a similar moment to back when I thought that Neon was the biz ass thought, but prior to it, they made us think that it was Lobo, and I gave that episode a very low score. But due to the following episodes fixing things, it made the previous episode actually much better. We have ourselves yet another Goku protagonist within the same year that will essentially be a god. And due to it, we can start seeing him do asshole abilities, essentially being able to just one-shot gestures himself. But like I said, I am of the belief that none of this is actually real. And why is that? Because this episode seemed to also emphasize more that Gira is essentially Kuwaga. Since, look, while Doug Dead explained that he can control and do whatever he wants with the Shoe Gods, he later demonstrated that he could also control Gira. Meaning, if his abilities are to control other arthropodic creations that are his, Gira being an extension of Kuligan could make the most sense when breaking things down. Now look, this plot point here is one of the big reasons why I'm so down on this episode. But it's not the only reason. You're welcome, commentator. I'm fine. I'm fine. Wait, what? That's it! We are Truth be told, this was going to be my first ever F rating, but I have it in my hearts of hearts that Kira's backstory was a fabrication by Raculus, as Doug did really seemed to be ad-libbing the points Raculus was laying out. We have to remember the DNA test that was done on Gira back in the early episodes to show that he was indeed Raculus' brother. Though, I still believe that there's more to this backstory than meets the eye. As in a previous review, find I did. Y'all find that? It seems like a super cop out. But what if it isn't? What Doug appears to is Doug that explaining that he is the creator of all the Shu God like creatures. He can do whatever he wants with them. And Gira has that same ability. So, Doug that controls Gira to summon King Ogre to destroy things. All while the background moves at a crisp three frames per second. But wait, the Shuga are fighting back, and Gira 
name drop them all using sure will to overcome the dead. Rain job. Boy, boy, boy. How conflicted I was with this episode. My first watch, I was disgusted. I absolutely hated this episode. With four watches, I actually disliked it even more. Then I slept on it. Literally. I, I took a nap like a couple hours ago just trying to gather.